So how do you keep going when you're apart from your partner? This isn't just relevant to the Philippines, but I mean, I spend a lot of time in other places. I've, you know, I've worked in Qatar, I've worked in Oman, been to other parts of the world where um, you have to go alone. Let's just put it that way. But the thing here is you need to find ways to keep yourself occupied. Um, my friend brought it up on Facebook the other day, actually. First thing I would look at is the, the stuff, like for the kids, I do YouTube videos. Um, there is actually one on YouTube. Well, there's a, there's a fair bit on YouTube you can't actually see because it's family stuff. But the, there was like, um, I, I did things like, uh, I did a poem on uh, Cat in the Hat where it was, what was it? Green eggs in ham from a man because I was in a man at the time. Things you know is keep the kids happy, but also you're trying to keep you know um, communication going with whatever you've got. Doesn't mean that you have to be on Skype. Doesn't mean you have to be sending it that day. If I'm sat in the hotel room with nothing to do, I'll make videos. I'll then upload them when I can. When I was out in the desert of my man, um, the internet was so slow that it took, I think, nearly about 18, 20 hours to send an email. Um, so sending a video wasn't happening for six weeks. Um, so you build them up. You save them all, then just upload when you can. Because it's a bit like letters, and that's another thing I do. I do actually write handwritten letters and send those as well because they are a keepsake. This stuff on the internet is here, but it's not in your hands. It's not physical. It's not something when your loved one's sat there alone at night missing you. Um, a letter is something they can get out from a shoebox that they have somewhere with all the letters and stuff that you send. Um, they're very important and personal. When I was in Scotland, I got a thistle and dry pressed the thistle and kept that for when April got to Europe and it was in the car for when um, we travelled over from Paris. Those things are really important, but also it's not just the actual item itself. It keeps you occupied because when you're in a man, you're looking for these you know what's what's local what's traditional what's something that very unique from here and if you do that wherever you are you've got something that is occupying your mind now when i'm in the uk one of the things i do is send ballot buying boxes because they're gifts for friends and family but also it's how you move things like plumbing fittings and getting chip shop sauce for all those little bits and pieces you miss when you're actually in the Philippines when you run out, getting your good tea bags out there, um, Radox for your bath soaks and all this sort of stuff. You do the shopping, you look for stuff, you talk to your missus, get her to shop an Asda or whatever for you and do the shopping list so when you go home at the weekend you go and do the shopping. You're doing something together, it's like shopping together, she's doing it online and you're actually physically going into the store. It keeps conversations going. On top of that, you've got the, the Skype where you can chat, you've got the... Um, in the UK, they're not too keen on hands-free these days, but you used to be able to like, Skype and just be chatting while you're travelling. I mean, when I'm driving up to Scotland, it's a five-and-a-half to six-hour drive, so I could leave it on Skype the whole journey. Um, so even if April goes out and comes back later, I'm still sat there on the internet, you know, because at the end of the day, I'm sat in the car, I've got the stereo on, but when she comes back, it, it switches straight to the Skype conversation. So... You've got that communication. Back in 2007, I didn't have that. 2007, we were doing most of our conversation um, with text, which was costing around £200 a month in text messages. We couldn't call because obviously... Uh, well, we call, but the calls were very expensive. But internet was either at home, when I was at home, or was 
uh, which which meant for me getting up at half past two in the morning for April going to work because she used to go into the office early so we'd actually talk. Um, you got because she had no computer at home because they had no internet at home. They had no laptop. They had no PC. She had to call from the office. So there is ways to keep things going and. Even pictures of food. I know some people go, oh, Facebook food, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of people out there that do it for reasons that people don't understand. For example, one of them is your partner wanting to know that you're eating healthy. But on top of that, you you can exchange things, you know, recipes, talk about food, what you're experiencing. Because from the Philippines, a lot of stuff's very limited. So when you go somewhere and they've got some fresh produce or something that's not available in the Philippines, my wife's actually interested in that. She's interested in what's locally sourced. You know, if I go to um, parts of Dundee, for example, and look for Dundee cake and look for specific regional things, she's interested because it, it's historic. It's like smoked fish. You know, certain areas of smoked fish where they bring them in off the ship and then they're smoked within an hour of leaving the boat those sort of things are interesting so those are a few things that can keep things going now i know in the philippines sometimes there's a lot of stuff going on especially the your partner's got kids but this is where looking at something like dropbox these days is very good because what happens is, I haven't got, actually got my mobile here, but when my kids use my phone or whatever, it creates the video, creates the photo, and it will send straight to Dropbox. So wherever I'm in the world, my Dropbox folder fills up with what the kids have been up to. The same could go for your partner. So she sends you a picture, she says, oh, I'm going to the school today, blah, blah, blah. And then it goes straight into the Dropbox very useful for keeping in touch with the day-to-day -day stuff because let's face it when you're apart it's the day-to-day -day stuff you miss you're missing each other you're missing not having that stuff going on but you don't want to run out of conversation so you don't go well been in the office today um did some paperwork it's the same as every other day but what happens is when you do these little video things because you can set your phone up for a Dropbox for your partner. So get this, your PC set up for the, the phones in the Philippines. Your phone is set up for your wife's laptop so that it's going the other way. But what you have, or you could just put them all into one Dropbox, it's up to you. Um, but the, the point being is when you go get up in the morning, you, you send these little messages going, all right, my love, just got up, um, just hitting the shower and off for breakfast this morning. And then, <coughs> then I'm down at breakfast going, um, having a full English breakfast, and then I'm getting my wife going, well, you should be eating porridge, blah, blah, blah. It's the normal day-to-day -day banter. Although it seems very trivial, very boring and dull to outside people, it's how you would normally have a chat around the table. And it's these things which keep the rapport going when you're apart. When you're going, oh, I've got to go and get the car service today, so I'll be online later, blah, 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 but I've got to see the mechanic first. and It's just random stuff, but it's what makes things normal. It's how you keep things going. It's why, you know, your partner may not see the importance of her going... Oh, we're just at the multi-cab, we're, we're just at the school now, we're just going through the gates, we're a little bit late, blah, blah, blah. And then the video clips cuts off. But that might be the only video of her you see that day, or even that week, if you're working in areas that have limited internet. So it becomes very, very important. But you have to remember, from a relationship point of view, that if somebody's going to cheat on you, a lot of it is going to be down to the distance. When you're away, uh, like people say, well, you know, where the cat will play sort of thing. But a lot of it is when people feel low and vulnerable, etc. And then it leaves the, the door open for somebody to walk in. If you keep all this rapport going and 
seeing how they are. And one of the key elements here, which a lot of people don't do, is ask your girlfriend, wife, how are you, how's things today, blah, blah, blah. Are you well? Have you been eating properly? Those sort of things women love. They, but a lot of guys just don't ask them. But they appreciate it. They really do. Because the fact is nobody else is asking. But it shows you care. Now, it doesn't matter that you know your wife's eating health. It doesn't matter that you know your wife's fine. The important bit is actually asking. Because they, they like to know that you're there. They like to know that you're saying, I hope you're fine. I hope you're okay, etc. Nothing's bothering you. Is everything, you know, they want to hear it. And these are the best bits of advice I can give, is just communicate in every format you can. Um, I also send flowers online, randomly. And, you know, it's not for birthdays or whatever, it's often just random, because people appreciate things more when they least expect it, because you normally find that they are just getting knock at the door, open the door, and... Surprise, surprise, a bouquet of flowers have turned up. And you know, it costs about 600 pesos. And you can do it online. Like I said, I do it on my PayPal. I've probably sent, I don't know, 20, 30 boxes of flowers over the years. Because um, we also send, like, for other people as well. You know, if they, they've helped us through something that's been... Uh, putting themselves out or somebody's been sick or something we send flowers as well so there's a lot of ways to keep the communication open but you need to understand that it's how you keep the relationship alive because if you're out for six months four months i mean the longest i've been away from home is a year um if you're away for a long period of time it's very difficult on your partner and it's difficult on you. If you switch yourself off from your partner, just so like, I've got to get the work done, blah, 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 don't assume they can. Because when they're at home, they're sleeping in the same bed that you're normally together in. They see the kids and sitting there thinking, I wish my husband was here playing with the kids. I remember at Christmas, blah, blah, blah. They have everything around them that reminds them of you. You need to put the extra effort in to keep everything alive and say, I'm here, I'm here with you every day. I do as much as possible. You know, my thoughts are constantly with you. All right, thanks for watching.